chapter 10. Then I looked and beheld, behold, in the firmament that was above the head of the cherubims, there appeared over them, as it were, a sapphire stone, as the appearance of the likeness of a throne. And he spake unto the man clothed with linen, and said, Go in between the wheels, even under the cherub, and fill thine hand with coals of fire from between the cherubims, and scatter them over the city. And he went in in my sight. Now the cherubim stood on the right side of the house when the man went in, and the cloud filled the inner court. Then the glory of the Lord went up from the cherub and stood over the threshold of the house, and the house was filled with the cloud, and the court was full of the brightness of the Lord's glory. And the sound of the cherubim's wings was heard even to the outer court as the voice of the Almighty God when he speaketh. And it came to pass that when he had commanded the man clothed with linen, saying, Take fire from between the wheels and from between the cherubims, then he went in and stood beside the wheels, and one cherub stretched forth his hand from between the cherubims under the fire, unto the fire that was between the cherubims, and took thereof, and put it into the hands of him that was clothed with linen, who took it and went out. And there appeared in the cherubims the form of a man's hand under their wings. And when I looked, behold, the four wheels by the cherubims, one wheel by one cherub, and another wheel by another cherub, and the appearance of the wheels was as the color of a barrel stone. And as for their appearances, they four had one likeness, as if a wheel had been in the midst of a wheel. When they went, they went upon their four sides. They turned not as they went, but to the place whither the head looked, they followed. And they turned not as they went. And their whole body, and their backs, and their hands, and their wings, and the wheels were full of eyes round about, even the wheels that they four had. As for the wheels, it was cried unto them in my hearing, O wheel! And every one had four faces. The first face was the face of a cherub, the second face was the face of a man, and the third the face of a lion, and the fourth the face of an eagle. And the cherubims were lifted up. This is the living creature that I saw by the river of Chebar. And when the cherubims went, the wheels went by them. And when the cherubims lifted up their wings to mount up from the earth, the same wheels also turned not from beside them. When they stood, these stood, and when they were lifted up, these were these lifted up themselves also, for the spirit of the living creature was in them. Then the glory of the Lord departed from off the threshold of the house and stood over the cherubims, and the cherubims lifted up their wings and mounted up from the earth in my sight. When they went out, the wheel also were beside them, and every one stood at the door of the east gate of the Lord's house, and the glory of the God of Israel was over them above. This is the living creature that I saw under the God of Israel by the river Chebar, and I knew that they were the cherubims. Every one had four faces apiece, and every one four wings, and the likeness of the hands of a man was under their wings. And the likeness of their faces was the same faces which I saw by the river Chebar, their appearances and themselves. They went every one straight forward. Chapter 11 Moreover, the Spirit lifted me up, and brought me unto the east gate of the Lord's house, which looketh eastward, and behold, at the door of the gate five and twenty men, among whom I saw Jaaz Zaniah, the son of Azer, and Pelatiah, the son of Beniah, the princes of the people. Then said he unto me, Son of man, these are the men that devise mischief, and give wicked counsel in this city, which say, It is not near. Let us build houses. The city is the cauldron, and we be the flesh. Therefore prophesy against them, saying, Prophesy, O son of man. And the Spirit of the Lord fell upon me, and said unto me, Speak, thus saith the Lord. Thus have ye said, O house of Israel, for I know the things that come into your mind, every one of them. Ye have multiplied your slain in this city, ye have filled the streets thereof with the slain. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Your slain whom ye have laid in the midst of it, they are the flesh. And this city is the cauldron, but I will bring you forth out of the midst of it. Ye have feared the sword, and I will bring a sword upon you, saith the Lord God. And I will bring you out of the midst thereof, and deliver you into the hands of strangers, and will execute judgments among you. Ye shall fall by the sword. I will judge you in the border of Israel, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. The city shall not be your cauldron, neither shall ye be the flesh in the midst thereof. But I will judge you in the border of Israel, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. For ye have not walked in my statutes, neither executed my judgments, but have done after the manners of the heathen that are round about you. And it came to pass, when I prophesied, that Pelatiah the son of Beniah died. Then fell I down upon my face, and cried with a loud voice, and said, Ah, Lord God, wilt thou make a full end of the remnant of Israel? Again the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, thy brethren, even thy brethren, the men of thy kindred, and all the house of Israel, holy are they unto whom 
The inhabitants of Jerusalem have said, Get you far from the Lord. Unto us is this land given in possession. Therefore say, Thus saith the Lord, Although I have cast them afar off among the heathen, and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. Therefore say, Thus saith Lord God, I will even gather you from the people, and assemble you out of the countries where ye have been scattered, and I will give you the land of Israel. And they shall come thither, and they shall take away all the detestable things thereof, and all the abominations thereof from thence. And I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you, and I will take the stony heart out of your flesh, and will give them a heart of flesh, that they may walk in my statutes, and keep mine ordinances, and do them, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. But as for them whose heart walketh after the heart of their detestable things and their abominations, I will recompense their way upon their own heads, saith the Lord God. Then did the cherubims lift up their wings, and the wheels beside them, and the glory of the God of Israel was over them above. And the glory of the Lord went up from the midst of the city, and stood upon the mountain, which is on the east side of the city. Afterwards the Spirit took me up and brought me in a vision by the Spirit of God into Chaldea, to them of the captivity. So the vision that I had seen went up from me. Then I spake unto them of the captivity of all things that the Lord had shewed me. In these two chapters, there's three or four things that people really want to know about. And the first one is, what are cherubim? Well, the long and short of it is very simply this. Just like there in the temple and the tabernacle, there were orders of, there were priests and there were Levites, and there were people who were servants as well to the Levites and servants to the priests and people who carried the wood and all and the water and all the rest of those things. Where Heavenly Father is concerned, there are angels who provide certain types of services, the messenger services, carrying information, doing certain things, and one of those orders is called the cherubim. Now, we don't have full information on what they do. We don't have much information on what they do, but that is what they seem to do all the time. Every time we see it, they have some assignment to do. That's it. Uh, when we get there, we'll know. In verses 2, 6, and 7, they talk about the coals of the fire, the symbolism of the coals, of the, taking the coals of the fire and giving them to somebody, is that eventually after the third time when... Uh, Judah and Jerusalem are captured, the city is burned. That's basically a judgment of God, burning the whole town. In verses 3, 7, and 11, uh, God understand Jeremiah sent letter over to the people in Babylonia saying, build houses, give your sons, give your daughters in marriage. You know, you're going to be there at least seven years. The people in Jerusalem, the false prophets, saying, no, 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 no. Don't worry about that. You're going to be coming back in two years. Yeah, all the temple stuff will be returned. Everybody will be back. And the reference basically is that, and it sounds really gross and horrible, that the cauldron and they're going to be the flesh, it sounds like they're going to be boiled in the flesh. And that's not what the, what, what the impression is. What it translates out to is that the cauldron is metal. And the walls of Jerusalem were impenetrable, they figured, just like the walls of the cauldron would be. And that they would be protected inside the walls of Jerusalem, just like the, wall, like the walls of a cauldron would protect meat that was put in it from anything that was on the outside. Pot could be broken, but a cauldron that made out of metal couldn't be. Very interesting. Now... The, you have to understand that all of these things that were going to happen, and one of the reasons that Jeremiah was telling these people, don't look to God's going back, was that there were horrible judgments that were still going to happen to Jerusalem. So anybody that went back was going to be in even bigger trouble than they were in Babylon. And they needed to stay where they were if they were going to stay safe and be the basis for the people who were going to go back in 70 years.